and welcome to Pecos. In this demonstration, we're going to show you how to log into Pecos and revalidate one of your Medicare enrollments. In this example, we'll be performing the revalidation on an application where you represent an organization, but the screens and steps are very much the same even if you're performing a revalidation as an individual practitioner. So to start, we're going to have to log in, so you can go ahead and pull up the login credentials you used when you first submitted your application. If you have any questions about your login credentials or need further support, go ahead and click on the Forgot Password link or the Manage slash Update User Profile link shown on the screen here. Note that if you do not have Pecos login credentials, please visit the Pecos homepage for more information on how to obtain what you need in order to log in. Entering user ID and password, selected login button. You'll then need to click on the My Enrollments button shown on the screen here and you'll then be brought to this page where you'll see your existing organizations which you can revalidate and the new application button here. Because we're revalidating an existing enrollment in Medicare, I'll select this View Enrollments button for whichever organization I'm trying to revalidate. In this example, it's Primary Health Clinic. You'll then be navigated to this screen where you can scroll down to the bottom of the page and you'll see any existing enrollments here and any new enrollments down underneath that. Because in this example I am revalidating an existing enrollment application for Primary Health Clinic, you'll see it here. You'll also see information on the revalidation notice sent indicator shown here as 10-15-2010. Note though that if you log into Pecos yourself and you don't see your current Medicare enrollments listed here, you'll still need to revalidate if you received a notice to do so. So to do this, you'll need to submit initial enrollment by clicking on the new application button on the previous screen and this submission will still count towards the revalidation. So again, in this example, you'll see the revalidation notice was sent on 10-15-2010. And I can go ahead and begin this revalidation by selecting the revalidate button shown here. You'll then be brought to the confirm reason for application screen where you'll need to confirm the reason that you're submitting an update or performing the revalidation. In this case, it is a revalidation and it says so here at the top of the screen. And because this is accurate, I'll scroll down to the bottom and select the Start Application button. At this point in time, you'll be pulled into your enrollment application, and you can navigate within this enrollment easily using the three tabs shown here at the top of the screen. I'm going to start by selecting this Topic View tab here. When you scroll down, you'll see all of the information that you've previously entered in for your Medicare enrollment shown here. Any updates that you need to make, you can do so at this time as well. So you do not need to submit separate updates for a revalidation and just a change of information. So for this example, I'm going to go ahead and make an update to the contact person telephone number on record. So I'll do that by selecting this contact person hyperlink. And then I'll use this edit button here to make my update. Note, you can also make updates by selecting the delete button or the add information button at the top of the section if more contact people need to be added to this enrollment. So I'll select the, add, the edit button now. And then I'll select the next page button. And then on this screen here, I'll update the telephone number to be the new accurate number. I'll then scroll down to the bottom of the screen and select the save button. At this point in time, I'm done making the update I needed to make to this enrollment application. And as you can see, this is the Review Complete button. That so I'll select that now. And doing this indicates that you've reviewed all of this contact person information and that it's accurate. And because it is indeed accurate and I've updated the telephone number, if we navigate back to the Go To Error Check tab, and as you can see on the Error Slash Warning Check tab, there are no errors or warnings left for this enrollment application. So if I go to the top of the screen here and select this Topic View button, I should now be able to scroll all the way down to the bottom of the screen and actually begin this revalidation submission. Again, any updates that you need to make to your enrollment application can be done at this time and you do not need to submit a revalidation or a change of information as separate submissions. So for example, if you need to make updates to your required and or supporting documents, you can do so at this time. Let's say you need to update or add new required documents and you want to electronically attach them to your enrollment, you could do so here using this required and or supporting documentation section. Because I don't need to make any updates to my electronically attached documents, I'm just going to select the Begin Submission button at the bottom of the screen. At this point in time, you'll be brought to the Electronic Signatures page where you will be prompted to indicate whether or not you would like to electronically sign any of the documents shown. 
So in this case, it's the certification statement, and I'm going to opt that yes, I want to electronically sign. Doing this means that I won't have to print out a copy of my certification statement and mail this to my Medicare administrative contractor. So after selecting yes, I do want to e-sign, I'll select the next page button at the bottom of the screen. You'll then be brought to the electronic signature submission page where you'll need to go and navigate to this drop down here shown on the screen and select an authorized signer. This is the person who will need to electronically sign on behalf of this revalidation in order for the Medicare administrative contractor to process your revalidation. So after selecting this person, in this case Jim Madison is the authorized official, so he will be electronically signing the enrollment, I'll hit this apply button here and then you'll be prompted to enter the email address information for this person. At this point in time, the contact person that you've selected under the Signatory for Organization Enrollment page will receive an email and will then need to log into the electronic signatures page and e-sign that the revalidation information is accurate. Once you've completed this information for your signer, you can select the next page button at the bottom of the screen to move forward. The next page you'll see is the submission page where you'll see your Medicare administrative contractor shown here as a label and you'll also see your reason for submission shown here. If you scroll down through the page you'll see additional information on required and supporting documentation and if you scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page you'll see any previously uploaded documents that were submitted along with your Medicare application. If you want to view these documents you can do so using the view button shown here and if at any point in time and coming to this page you realize you need to make another update to your application or something on this page looks inaccurate, you can just go ahead and select this previous page button at the bottom of the screen to go back into your enrollment and make any further updates that you need before you move forward. For the purpose of this demonstration, because everything on this page is accurate for me, I'm going to select this complete submission button now. At this point in time, a pop-up will appear on your screen notifying you that any documentation that you have not electronically uploaded with your enrollment will need to be printed and mailed and sent in to your Medicare Administrative Contractor. And if you do not mail this required documentation, your application will risk being delayed. So once you acknowledge this fact, you can go ahead and just click on the OK button shown here. And you'll then be brought to the Submission Confirmation page, which serves as a receipt that you can print and store in your personal records. Congratulations, you've just now completed a revalidation for an organization in Pecos.